All right, guys. Let's talk about some EMR acronyms. So these are going to be things that you're going to use throughout your time as an EMR. Maybe you might one day progress up to an EMT or go to a paramedic. Throughout your entire time in first response, this will be something that you're going to use. So this isn't wasted information. Um, basically, what I know why what you're thinking is uh, I signed up for EMR, but I didn't sign up, and I see that on there, but I didn't sign up for acronyms. So what is an acronym? That's a good question. So what it is we're talking about is an abbreviation that's been formed from the initial letters of other words, and then it's pronounced as a word. So think of like the Federal Bureau of Investigations, pretty easy one, FBI. Um, that type of stuff. You see here, we got sample. You've got OPQRST. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about several here for about the next ten minutes. Now, sample. We're, you see, we're moving on down to sample um, right here. So, whoops, I know that looks different on your screen because it makes like a funny little picture. But sample history. So that's an acronym to help you remember what questions are important to ask during your assessment of a patient. So it's going to kind of guide you through this interview process. And, not, and if you follow it, you're not going to miss at least some real vital information. So that's acronym. When we talk about it, it's really honestly the gold standard for getting the uh, subjective history of a patient. And it's, the nice thing about it is it's used on medical patients and trauma patients. So you don't have to think about, hey, this is a medical patient. I'm going to do something different than a sample. We do a sample on every single patient. Now, this is going to be for your EMR testing. This is going to be for your EMR career and any, any further uh, stuff you might do in that first response world. So it's intended to help you to guide you through that detailed interview of the patient so you can get a better understanding of what has led to this patient's condition. Sorry. All right, let's, let's carry on. So, sample. First thing is S, symptoms. So when we ask symptoms, what seems to be bothering you the most? They may, and I, I like to say the most. If they, they may list three or four different things, but what did you call us here for today? Well, my chest hurts, my back hurts, um, I ran my foot over with the lawnmower, whatever. Moving on down, we move to allergies. A, for allergies, are you allergic to anything? Move down to medications for M, medications. Do you currently take any medications? Then P, past medical history. Do you have any current medical conditions? <coughs> L, for last oral intake. When was the last time you ate or drank something? And what was it? And then E would be events preceding. So what were you doing when you started having these symptoms? And that's your sample history, helping you get a history of the complaint. Now, move on down to OPQRST. It just keeps moving on me, doesn't it? There we go. So, this acronym is often is most often used in conjunction with a sample as a guide for asking questions regarding a patient's symptoms. But really, specifically, pain is when this is the best. <coughs> and it's during an acute illness. So, if they've had back pain for 14 years, this isn't going to be that very, a very good way to do it. So, this is a great acronym to find out some subjective history about a person's chest pain, abdominal pain. Each question should be asked to get a better understanding of the patient's symptoms. So, OPQRST, O, onset. So, did the pain start gradually or all of a sudden? When did the pain start? Provocation. Does anything make the pain feel better or does anything make the pain uh, feel worse? Quality. Can you describe it? So we're talking about sharp, dull, you know, pressure, those type of questions. Radiate. Where is your pain? Does it go anywhere else in your body? So sometimes, you know, you might, you guys have probably been on a call or, or you will be very soon where someone, they have chest pain right in the center of the chest and then it moves, say, into their left shoulder. And um, there's a lot of physiological reasons for that, but those are things that, that help us understand what's going on within their body. And then severity. How would you rate your pain on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, obviously, 1 being the least, 
10 being the worst. Now, sometimes it's not a bad idea to ask them, like, what's been the worst pain in your life? So, you know, when a lady says childbirth, you know, that's pretty legit. That's, that's a legit 10. And then time. How long ago did you start feeling the pain? So really, when did this start? OPQRST, onset, provocation, quality, radiate, severity, and time. And that's that one. Let's move on. Pearl. So this is something that we do for an eye exam. So uh, Pearl, it's an eye exam. It's a pupillary assessment, basically, and it's also a neurological examination. So by looking at people's eyes, you're able to tell quite a bit of stuff if things are working correctly or not. Um, EMS, this is things that EMS personnel can do in the field. So uh, that's, you know, we want to make sure that we're doing that right. So within PERL, you have P-E-R-R-L. Pupils equal round and reactive to light. So when we, when we, when the dark room is a little bit dark and you shine just a, a bright light into someone's um, eye, it should close down trying to uh, have a, that's a natural reaction. So it's trying to kind of uh, shield itself. If it doesn't close down, if it stays big but blown open and dilated, then that tells us certain things. So that's pearl. Pupil equal round and reactive to light. Now the big the big doggy, DCAP BTLS. A lot of stuff here. So it's an acronym used during a rapid head to toe assessment, and you guys are are going to be learning how to do that rapid head to toe assessment of a trauma patient. So starting from the head, you'll examine each part of the body, looking for any of these signs, stopping to treat any of them, but they need to be life threatening if you stop to treat them. So if you stop to treat someone's little boo boo they got on their knee, that is wrong. If you stop to uh, treat someone that has a bad laceration over their femoral artery or they have something stuck, in, stuck inside of them, then that's what we're talking about. Now, we get into the deformity. So we're looking for, obviously, things that aren't quite right. You know, I make a joke and say things like maybe they got an extra elbow or an extra kneecap. So if you've ever been around, you know, bad car crashes and broke people, um, it, is, it does appear sometimes people have extra stuff, like their arm bends in places it wasn't supposed to. So deformities, contusions, abrasions, Penetration, so maybe, you know, there's also a puncture on that as well, but it's the same thing for me as, as a penetration. Um, burns, do they have tenderness? Does it hurt there? Do they have a laceration? Do they have swelling? Maybe they, they fell down and went boom, and now their left ankle's all swollen up. Or maybe they got hit in the head, um, you know, in a car crash, and, and uh, they have some swelling right above their right eye or something like that. So that is DKEP BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasions, penetrations, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and swelling. And that is complete for our EMR acronyms lecture. Now, uh, make sure you're aware of these. Make sure when you come to lab that you're going to be able to say these because you will be quizzed about these. It's going to be very important that you know these. So um, it's going to be very important when you go on a scene, you're going to be able to ask these questions. Sample. It's going to be very important when they say that they've got, oh, I skipped one, so good, I'm glad I came back up here. Um, it's going to be very important when they say they got the chest pain that you go, oh, I should use the OPQRST here. Well, when, when did it start and what you were you doing when it started? And does, and does the, the pain, um, <coughs> does it get any better or any worse with anything? Now, those, all those questions. I'm sorry, I don't know how I, fi how I skipped right over that. So AVPU, this is a... Uh, this is a, an acronym that's used as a, as a tool, I'm sorry, I turned around for a second, as a tool to record and document a patient's responsiveness to determine their level of consciousness. So what we're saying is how do they respond to you? If they're alert, eyes are open. When you walk up, eyes are open and they speak to you, that would be alert. If their eyes are open and they're making contact with you. If verbal, if they um, their eyes are not open and you're saying something to them and they reply back to you with uh, with words, but they're not looking around and their eyes aren't open, all of that, pain, that'd be verbal. Pain is when they don't respond to verbal, 
then you have to go down to pain, which is like you give them a little sternal rub or, you know, they get a little pinch or something and they respond to that. That's, and these are all things that tell us as a paramedics or EMS crew that basically what we're talking about here is they're getting sicker and sicker. So everyone should be alert. And then people that are, ver that are verbal, they could be sick, maybe not sick, but people that only respond to pain, that's not very good, obviously. And then unresponsive patients, they're probably pretty sick. So that's the AVPU. And then Pearl and DCAP BTLS. All right, that's at 10 minutes. So EMR acronyms. If you guys need anything, just let us know.